my friends. There's nothing new under the sun. It's all been done before. 1586, this guy here, he, Tycho Brahe, check him out. Uh, Johannes Kepler was his assistant. It says he correctly saw the moon orbiting the earth, but was wrong about the sun orbiting the earth. It's pretty weird. If you look it all up, it's kind of odd. But yeah, there's nothing new. For thousands of years, we go back. Uh, you know, they've seen things flying around. They've seen aircraft. But what I, what I think about is, is maybe um, it's just kind of what was left around. Uh, take your car and park it out somewhere and let the ocean cover it up for a few hundred years and let the sun beat on it for a couple thousand and it won't be there anymore. But that rock will. You know, they tell us how they moved everything and how they, you know, moved big heavy loads. And <clears throat> there's a lot of construction, you know, in 1700s through the 1800s. <clears throat> basically, before 19, uh, let's see, before the early 1920s, because it tells you here, 1916, the first pumps in the country started to appear in 1916. But horses were still the primary means of transportation and most cargo was moved by them. In 1918, there were three million working horses. Then it goes on to tell you about how Australia, by the mid-1920s, there's 250,000 vehicles. Now, anyone that lives in Australia, you got to check this out. Um, they decided not to put a railway in. Because, see, everybody was doing their, you know, everybody was doing the history. And uh, they were writing their books real quick. And uh, when they were writing their books, they had to hurry up. And uh, they just said, yeah, you know what? Uh, hey, remember, uh, we decided we didn't want any. We don't need them. Uh, we'll just use trucks. But they're pretty awesome, though. So, thank Australia for the big Mack trucks and stuff we have. Look, shorter hours for mother. <laughs> I love it. Um, Remington. So we see it all over the earth. It's everywhere. Um, it's not really hidden that whole, you know, this isn't something that's really hidden. It It's kind of just laying around. You have to just kind of pick and choose what it is that you're looking at. You know, I know your eyes can tell you when something is old world and when it's not. But here's just weird things that happen. Like... We think, oh, well, you know, we, we just now know, 100 and something years ago, a giant condenser being hoisted up onto a cruise ship in 1912. An electric, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever that is, a driven wheel, 30 miles an hour, February 1932. Him and his son just made that, I mean, I guess, right? Wireless photographic transmission, 1920. Amazing. If you think we didn't always care about the roads, 1936. Uh, that was a tractor. That that was a tractor. That's how they, yeah. Come on. Imagine if you did that now in Italy. They'd arrest you for driving a car into the ocean, 1910. A woman waiting on her gas-powered washing machine in 1914. This one's weird. <clears throat> Adjusting a dial on a machine used for vitamin A extraction. That's weird. I never knew that. Now, to prove that there's nothing new under the sun, who would have thought that the first person to envision a computer program would be the daughter of Lord Byron? You guessed it. Augusta Ada. Huh. The first. Callous Lovelace. December 10th, 1815. She was a child prodigy, if you didn't know it. Never heard of her, ever, in my life. She showed an exceptional talent for mathematics. Charles Babbage. So is that where they got the Babbage? Is often cre credited with coming up with the concept of a programmable computer. Hmm. That's weird, right? thought so. Well, the story gets kind of weird. 
Yes, yeah, Sam. Now, this is a before 1850s. Anybody that knows anything about computers, I don't know what that could be. Eh, some good math, huh? Mm -hmm. And um, this right here is Science Museum's Difference Engine. Now, Ada's notes describe the use of codes in handling letters, symbols, and numbers, theorizing methods that make the engine repeat a series of instructions, a process that is known today as looping. It is this work that made Ada responsible for the first computer algorithm. How'd she do that? She was in 1850. <laughs> this is the, uh, there it is. Um, and remember, there was no place to buy those parts. You had to hand make that stuff. Everything handmade. Every wheel, dial, everything. Handle, everything. Rod, everything. And <clears throat> this difference engine, I guess it's called. The Annette, let's see. Okay, so there's two. She wrote that the analytical engine might act upon other things besides number. Were objects found whose mutual fundamental okay relations could be expressed by those extra science if with those that we could put some throw some science on it. Supposing for instance that the fundamental relations of pitch sounds in the science of harmony <clears throat> and of musical composition were susceptible of mathematical expression and adaptations. The engine might compose elaborate and scientific pieces of music of any degree of complexity or extent. Okay. Well, cool. I'll buy that. She's really smart, right? I mean, she was probably awesomeness. She had a chance to look at the so-called difference engine prior to its completion and was captivated by it. At a dinner, she heard about Babbage's ideas for the calculating engine dubbed the analytical engine. So it used punch cards instead of, you know, I guess electricity. But it still had electricity, though. I mean, they had electricity. I guess their power in this thing and what? If she died in 1850, I mean, so it was before 1850 if it had power. And, you know, sadly, her work garnered little attention while she was alive and suffered serious health problems with asthma and had episodes of hallucinations and mood swings. <laughs> Not laughing at her. Man, I, it, it, doesn't that sound like a lie? So every engine's been made already. There's water engines, you know. Uh, you name it, everything's been made. There's been, uh, you know, a lot of things you see, uh, these gigantic machines. <clears throat> and uh, you won't see them now. Well, you will, but eh, in certain places. But not just the average Joe, kind of little hole-in-the-wall place where it looks like it's falling apart and it has just, you know, 10,000 ton forges or whatever they weigh. Look at this. See this guy right here? <clears throat> I don't know if you notice, there's nothing hooked to that. There's no power going to that. That's weird. But there's just nothing new under the sun. Everything's been made already. We might make it better. Okay. Um, we might make it last longer, go further, go faster. But it's all been done. And, you know, they might have started out and they couldn't, they couldn't go as far. But in the end, there's nothing new. It's been done. We just keep repeating it, you know. Um, and sometimes we go backwards. We do. I mean, as you can see, these electric cars, amazing. Um. Supposedly, they go hundreds of miles on batteries. Well, you know how it is. Government had to get rid of those batteries because we can't have them doing that. They went like four or five times further. We see these big engines, big, big machines. They always look like they've been just rigged up to do something. It's not their original intent. Submarines from the 1800s. You know. We say we've done everything. Well, we've only been about eight miles down in the ground and maybe eight miles up. Mm -hmm. 
you know, they had the weirdest things, you know, hundreds of years ago. And, uh, you're looking at 80 to 100 years. Some things I'm showing you 200 years. This is, I believe, from the, is it the 40s? 30s. They didn't have one that had one that uh, dispenses out whiskey. But amazingly, you couldn't get that picture. But yeah, they show a lot of things where it kind of doesn't make sense on their little timeline here. Just take, for instance, this. Uh, carrying passengers with electricity. Uh, well, you know, I'm saying that, you know, they they had some stuff to do here to make it work. But, you know, for another video, I can prove that those tracks were, were already there. They were destroying... Uh, locomotives um, they claim that they started building locomotives steam ones you know and they'll give you a time let's just say for the sake of talking you know in 1820 they made this church this this train now now they're destroying it the next year later it doesn't make any sense <clears throat> and it says here that uh Siemens and house presented the world's first electric train in which power was supplied through the rails 150 volt direct current flowed through the two rails to the small locomotive via an insulated flat iron bar mounted between the rails. That's 1879 with like, uh, oh, um, cowboys and Indians running around? Like, that, I don't know. All right, so, and sometimes when you see these pictures, of this stuff does it not look really 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 old but there's just nothing new under the sun whatsoever get this imagine 54 cities governed by educated officials and they by a prince who is elected for life even though war has not been formally put to an end, it is only used as a last resort. The people do not see any glory in fighting and capture their enemies instead of killing them. This describes the original utopia, the pagan, pacifist, and communist world created 500 years ago in the fiction of writer Thomas More. All right? Now, one thing, however, is certain. Now, here we go. No civilization has existed in history that resembles that utopia. Except, now, no other civilization has existed in history except for the mysterious Indus Valley Civilization, one of the four great early civilizations, or its contemporaries, Mesopotamia, ancient China, and ancient Egypt, are well known for their veneration and celebration of war prayer and violence. No such evidence of this practice in the Indus civilization exists. Jeez. Many artifacts such as jewelry and cookware have been found but not one single weapon. Come on. In addition, there is little evidence of any kind of government, leader, or system of royalty. Many specialists have described or decried the notion that the Hindus could have existed without the institutions of government and war. It is nonetheless an interesting and somewhat reassuring thought. In our world of terrorism, conflict, inequality, and autocracy, the idea of a true utopia is nothing more than wishful thinking. That's what they want you to believe. Because there's nothing new under the sun. Everything's been done before. Um, you know, we're not just learning this place right now as we go. We already know. The problem is, is finding the truth and seeing where it's at. It's got to be somewhere. But we keep searching. And I promise you, we're going to find it. I love you all. Take care of yourselves. Wild Dogs out. Well, this is going to sound very, very crazy. I'm already like 3,000 years old right now. I just tell people I'm 33 because I don't age. Like 3,000. I know that's going to sound weird, but I don't age. 
I'm immortal. There's nothing new under the sun. Which was true in my time, just as it's true today. Be excellent to each other.